Next thing the three ponies knew, they were outside the mansion grounds. The sound of multiple bodies slamming against a heavy iron door broke them out of their dazed state. Yeah, that door was not going to hold them back forever. No time to celebrate, little ponies. Run. As they ran down the path, they heard the ear-splitting screech once more. Don't stop! Pipsqueak shouted over the sound of thunder and heavy rain. Scootaloo, which way is the chorus hut? Um... She stopped, dumbfounded, and circling the fork in the road. She faced them, and then, with her left wing, she pointed down the right path. It's this way! She turned right at the fork in the road. All right, let's go! After Pipsqueak passed her by, Scootaloo stretched her wing, separating Sapphira from the two ponies. What do you think you're doing? You're not coming with us! Before Sapphira could process what Scootaloo had just said, Scootaloo had spun around and bucked Sapphira in the chest, knocking the pale unicorn into the mud. Come on, Pipsqueak! Pipsqueak looked at the struggling Sapphira. He started galloping along with Scootaloo, but hesitated when he heard Sapphira's voice struggle to cry out. Wait! Pipsqueak stopped just long enough to hear Sapphira's next words. Zakora's hut isn't that way. Sapphira revealed, coughing and struggling to regain her normal breathing. That kick must have hurt her worse than, Scootaloo reali than Pipsqueak realized. Scootaloo stopped to see Pipsqueak wasn't following. What are you waiting for, Pipsqueak? Pipsqueak, Sapphira gasped. Listen to me. Scootaloo walked closer towards them. I thought we were friends, Pipsqueak. I thought you trusted me. Z Zakora's hut isn't... Pipsqueak couldn't hear the rest, as the screeching noise got louder. They didn't have a lot of time to waste here. Pipsqueak, you have to choose now. I've been your friend since you got here. She's just a pony we barely know. You have to decide who and what to believe, because all three of us can't walk out of here like we came in. Scootaloo bit down on Pipsqueak's star scarf. We have to go! Let him go! Sapphira's telekinetic shove returned the buck that Scootaloo had given her earlier by knocking the orange pegasus into the mud. And now it came to Pipsqueak. He couldn't stay here forever. Scootaloo was right about that. He needed to make a choice, because there didn't seem to be a full chance of the three of them walking out of this together. Scootaloo struggled to her feet, staring daggers at Sapphira, rather than fighting the unicorn. She instead turned towards the path of Zakora's hut. Pipsqueak, come with me. We have to get to Zakora's hut. Sapphira stared at the sky for a few seconds. It looked as though a sudden realization came upon her. You're a bad liar, Scootaloo. Sapphira pointed to the left path with her hoof. Zakora's hut's the opposite direction. No, it isn't. She stomped her hooves. It's this way. I know it is. Ch trust me. I... Pipsqueak remembered Cornet and Noi, all their classmates, turned into monsters. Who's to say that Sephira or Scootaloo aren't monsters like the rest of them? Make a decision, Pipsqueak. I can't decide. Why not? Because you're not Scootaloo, Sephira announced loudly. W what That's ridiculous. Scootaloo stepped towards Pipsqueak, but Sephira stopped her with a small telekinetic shove. She retaliated by picking up a rock with her tail and tossing it at Sapphira's head. Stop it, you two! Pipsqueak cried out in vain. Scootaloo became noticeably enraged when she looked at Sapphira's deadpan expression. See? I told you! She's one of the Pied Piper's minions, just stalling us! Think about it. She gave us the runes, they were working fine, and then suddenly they stopped working? <laughs> Notice how she's never close by when they start working? She's the only unicorn here! You can't possibly blame me for that. Sapphira shot back. And she expects us to believe that some monster that we never see up close just followed her all the way to Ponyville? Why? For what reason? None of this started happening until she came. I think she knew all along. Don't think I haven't noticed. You're always evasive when someone asks you about what happened in Hollow Shades. You've been staring into the Everfree Forest every day, probably listening to the words. You've been sneaking around, and you seem to know where the monsters were, and... Pipsqueak's ears perked up. Something during her rant. She let something slip. 
You've been hearing the voices. Everything seemed to go dead silent. That alone cast the shadow of doubt over Scootaloo. Come to think of it, Scootaloo wasn't acting like herself. Like the way she was so convincing that there was a traitor. Or how she sucker bucked Sephira. And some of what she was saying contradicted things she'd said earlier. Scootaloo would go through life thinking, what would Rainbow Dash do? And here, Scootaloo was trying frantically to pin the blame on Sephira. There was something else, though. Something she'd done earlier. Scootaloo, lift your wing. What? We, we don't have time for that. Do it, Scootaloo, Pipsqueak demanded. Scootaloo scoffed and lifted her unbandaged left wing. There. Happy now? Now can we stop debating this? Leave the traitor and just go? Sephira telekinetically grabbed Scootaloo's right wing and lifted it up. She sowed no signs of pain until three seconds had passed. Three seconds too late. That's the wrong wing, Scootaloo. It was too late to fake the pain. Pipsqueak saw all he needed. He returned to Sephira's side. You're taking her side over mine? I've been your friend much longer. What the hey, Pipsqueak? Back at the cottage, you mentioned there were three of us. You weren't there when Snail showed up. Thunder cracked overhead. I... 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 I was hiding nearby. I saw him come to the cottage. How'd you know the monster got Lemon? How did you know there was a monster? We never mentioned any specific ones. Sephira quickly added. But because... And everyone who was left alone turned into a monster. Noi was alone with you. I noticed she was acting strangely after she'd been alone with you. Maybe she was just scared. Okay, fine. Maybe there isn't a traitor, and I just got a little paranoid. But come on, guys. Are you really... Do you know whose idea it was to come out here? I remember now. There was a voice blocking the memory, but... I think I remember now. Scootaloo, you're the only one who's ever been deep into the Everfree Forest. It was you who told me that. Pipsqueak specifically remembered. Back in class, when Diamond Tiara was calling them blank flanks and scaredy ponies, it was Scootaloo who said that they could find the old house in the Everfree and stay there for the night to prove they weren't scaredy ponies. It's so deep in the Everfree, Diamond Tiara would never know there was an old house out there. Sephira was starting to put the pieces together. You were the first to fall. It was you all along. You made the maps. You even marked Sakura's hut being in the south of the big house. Damatiara would never know where that was. So what? You're going north. Pipsqueak pointed his nose to the north star in the sky. You're the one who led us here. But Damatiara, being Damatiara, is the one who took charge. Sephira added. You look pretty pale, Scootaloo. That color doesn't really go with the blood on your hooves. Pipsqueak's eyes darted to the dark red splotches on her hooves that he thought were part of the red streaks on her costume. But now he saw that they were actually a much darker shade than the painted decals on her costume. Had she always been suspicious of Scootaloo? Or did she just realize it now? Oh, you thought I didn't notice the way you were constantly wiping your hooves? Are they clean enough yet? Or can you still see the blood? Scootaloo twitched at the words, clean enough. Where were you, Scootaloo, when you went back to the cabin? Where did you go? You weren't hiding nearby. You're the one who killed the cockatrice. Who else did you kill? She reached into her saddlebag and threw down a wooden sword. The same one Pipsqueak brought with him. He even had his name carved into the hilt. The same one Scootaloo had never returned. There was an unmistakable sight of dried blood on the side. Because I see a couple blue hairs in your mane. Blue hair. Just like Archer. 
She didn't go quietly. Her blood's dried as well. I think she's been dead for a while now. Sephira said while kneeling down to do something that Pipsqueak couldn't see. How long ago? Probably not long after you last spoke. I'd say about an hour. No, 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 no. There had to be another explanation, right? Scoots, tell me it isn't true. You didn't... For a while, the only sounds were from the rain beating down the trees. Scootaloo! How long have you been like this, Scootaloo? Sephira asked. A few days ago, I was feeling lonely without Apple Bloom or Sweetie Belle. I went to visit Zakora in the evening. I followed the path, but there was a mudslide blocking my normal route. I took a route route through the forest, and that's when... That's when... She trailed off. That's when I... Uh -huh. She clenched her head in her hooves. I think... I died. Back then. I remember... A cold, dark loneliness. I remember feeling crushed. Hard to breathe. Then I woke up outside the Everfree Forest. Every night I had this dream. A voice telling me to do things. Even when I was awake, I could hear it. In the back of my head. And that music. That drum. Stupid music. Always. Always. Always playing. A small green light far in the distance was becoming larger. Quickly. Scootaloo already's pale coat was starting to lose more of its orange color. I hear the voice now, you know. It's telling me to stop you. To lead you away. To attack you. But I don't want to. I won't, you know. There's a lot of souls in there. So many, it's like a buzzing hive. All of them working towards the same goal. All of them, one mind. One vision. But I think something's wrong with me. I still have some control. I think. I'm not sure if it's holding the reins and directing, or if I'm just a puppet, as I speak words that aren't my own. But still, I want to believe that I do have a choice. So, maybe, I can stop it. No, I can't stop it. But I can slow it down. And I will, because... The void in her eyes stared at them through the tears. Because you're my friends, and I don't want anyone to hurt you. I'm so sorry. For everything. Run! She shouted as loud as she could. Pipsqueak and Sephira sprinted off immediately in the correct direction. Pipsqueak looked back at Scootaloo's shrinking body every so often, until she was gone. Scootaloo. He fought back the tears and just kept galloping.